Well, we promised there'd be one more video on McCoy 1. It may not be the last. This one entitled, Tremendous Success, My Arm. Not everybody seems to be quite as bullish as Invictus Energy about the operations at uh, Mikoyu. Uh, this here is one typical take on it from uh, one new source. Just as a reminder, Mikoyu is this well here drilled in North Zimbabwe, and it was targeting, well, at the time claimed to be up to 4.3 billion barrels of reserves. This is actually the fourth video we've done. The first one, we looked at the, the prospect itself, pre-drill, and uh, gave an opinion as to what we thought it might be. Secondly, we had a look uh, in particular at Baobab, which was going to be the second well in the program, and compared it with the uh, the analogs, and it didn't compare very favorably at all. In fact, we see Baobab as being an extremely high-risk prospect. Finally, uh, the third video, we looked at the topple results, which uh, certainly impact the assessment of Baobab, but within the Koyu well, again, we didn't think there was a, a great deal uh, in that upper section. The partnership is Invictus Energy, uh, an Australian explorer, and 20% by One Gas Resources. Formerly, it was the largest undrilled prospect uh, onshore Africa. It certainly uh, can't be claimed to be that today. Here is the share price history in the last year. It's been a, a roller coaster. There have been a lot of short term winners and losers, depending on uh, if you invested on a peak or on a trough, and when you and if you uh, sold. What value has been added here a year on? And you can see the date of this video here. It's actually after the results were announced and you can see that the share price has taken a tumble. A recap, pause the video and have a look at what we said uh, or look at some of the previous videos. Here's, here's a quick reminder of, of what the prospect was all about. Some more detail here. Again, pause the video if you want to have a look. It was at the end of the day, it was drilled quite a long way down dip. We didn't really kind of understand that entirely. So the well spudded on the 24th of September and, and here is a look at the rig. There were a number of operational issues, non-productive time, series of, of uh, systems that didn't appear to work, mud gas, readings, problems with mud pumps. Uh, I don't think anybody uh, came out of this with a glowing report, but uh, it is tough operating in the middle of a continent with great distances to supply bases and having spare parts, but perhaps that part of the logistics could have gone better. The initial well results, we've reviewed that, the top hole results video, and we didn't really think that any of these targets actually came in. At the 200 horizon, yes, there was uh, high resistivity, but it was very low porosity apparently, so it's just a tight interval. It was relatively thin, 10 to 15 meters, with a complex uh, mineralogy. Now, not sure exactly what that means, but by now, Invictus Energy should know. No pressure measurements, no fluid samples, uh, the whole conditions were cited, and it's now not any behind casing, but uh, imagine the uh, running cement in this well. It'll never be re-entered. I anticipate. Really wasn't any statement at the time on the other horizons, but anticipate that uh, there was nothing of any great interest there. So the well then, around about the end of November, it carried on down. There were reports of uh, elevated gas shows and fluorescence in the, the primary target. And yes, indeed, the upper angle was by far and away, the, what looked to be uh, the most interesting uh, horizon. This is the uh, the original borehole here, and then here's the sidetrack. Now, this is a very, very expensive sidetrack. It was only really undertaken because operational difficulties in, in getting a full suite of, of wireline logs and and samples in the original borehole, and things started heading south. The, the, the well had been open for a long, long time, and so it was decided to kick off here and drill through this section now. It was reported they were going to be drilling with a much lower mud weight, but mud weight again is cited as being one of the problems in the, in the sidetrack well, so only 50 metres away from the uh, original hole. Now this was again 24th of November a sample that's shown here, it's a sidewall core obtained at this depth, uh, showing some fluorescence. Now it's not really very easy to, to work out what's going on here. This fluorescence, is it hydrocarbon fluorescence? Is it mineral fluorescence? We don't really have a, a good feel from uh, from the report. So then you come into uh, January and uh, this is the most recent report from just a, a couple of days ago and reporting the results. 
that the sidetrack really failed to obtain fluid samples. There's still a lot of ambiguity uh, over the upper Angua. Now, it is reported that there was over 900 metres of, of a gross interval with some shows, but without understanding were the shows coming from any porous intervals, it's uh, not easy to, to interpret what's going on here. The Exalo Rig 200 contract extended for 12 months. You know, is this a case that the rig's got nowhere to go, that it's uh, staying here because uh, contractually it has to? Fishing, very, very expensive. Side tracking, very, very expensive. Wireline interpretation calculated porosities of up to 15%. Well, you know, was that just one thin streak of porous material? Gas saturations of up to 90%. Was that in these sands? It isn't clear. And, uh, you know, I think the company's trying to put us positive a spin on everything on every occasion uh, we've seen this pre-drill during the drilling and now post-drill as well conditions unsuitable um, for obtaining a fluid sample so the rig is going to be warm stacked that means it's going to be uh, left on location and some uh, maintenance and upgrades now the i think the upgrades are going to be to the mud system prior to recommending drilling of either mccoyu 2 or baobab 1 in 2023 one firm well in 2023 it is certainly uh, cheaper to keep the rig on location than to demobilize it and then bring it back. This is the first well in the Kabora Bassa Basin, a new basin. Now, uh, talk about a proven hydrocarbon system. There were some gas shows, apparently. Uh, there was some fluorescence. Uh, not being able to obtain a, a fluid sample, which would have enabled declaration of a discovery. The Upper Angua alternation member horizon, up to 900 or over 900 foot of gross interval. Uh, but how much of that is actually considered to be net? Um, without the logs, nobody can really make an assessment. How much of, uh, of that gross thickness is actually uh, net sand? Uh, we don't know. Here's, uh, you can see the well is certainly quite a long way down dip at just about every horizon. Baobab, we don't like this prospect at all. For the reasons given in the video we, we do on that prospect, this is the uh, overall the drilling campaign and Mikoyu 1 and Sidrack Well have been a tremendous success, not how we see it. So in summary, the results are ambiguous and there's uh, still great uncertainty. A lot of the press releases, um, it seems like um, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors around. Invictus used the expression a proven uh, petroleum system. A lot of other people um, uh, use the expression working petroleum system. Uh, and, and in this case, you ask, well, who is it working for? It doesn't appear to be in working for the investors or the shareholders at this minute. So many questions are still unanswered. We think the high peer, fantastic result, tremendous success. It's good that the well was drilled, we think, safely with, with no reported health and safety incidents. And uh, this sidetrack was an expensive operation and has ended up adding very little now. It's certainly no major discovery. There are gas shows. It may be in time that it's uh, shown to be a, a modest discovery. It's, it's not clear as yet that that is the case. It looks like the same investment that's been made to date is going to be required again, because uh, if you're going to drill the Makoyu 2, it's going to be a, a similar costing well, and it's now going to be uh, targeting a much lesser prize than originally envisaged. Baobab, well... We say very risky prospect. I really can't see much competition in this basin uh, without some kind of uh, further proof that there is a discovery and some better indications of, of how significant a uh, petroleum system we have here. The investors, after all, have, have paid for all the data. Farm out? Well, another way forward, but it didn't work pre-spud. And based on the results, uh, in, well, the partnership are going to have to show any potential uh, farm and e the logs and, and they're going to be uh, studied in, in great depth and that would be an encouragement if there was a, a farm and e and so the key takeaways from this i think investors need to be convinced that it's worthwhile drilling makoyu too it, it really needs full disclosure putting out the mud logs and the, and the wireline logs would, would give investors the confidence that there was something that was worthy of uh, of chasing after in a, in a follow-up well there's a need to address the resource size and risk at Baobab 1 based on the results in the uh, the top hole of Makoyu 1 because we don't see that as being a, a particularly attractive prospect. At least one firm well in 2023? Well, I guess that's because contractually um, there may well be a commitment to a second well with this rig. 
Uh, so what are the forward costs? You know, maybe the company need to, to come out and make a statement on that. And, well, with all the above, I guess what we're saying is um, caveat emptor. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, ring the bell if you want to see any more. I suspect we're not going to be publishing anything on uh, Makuyu for many months to come.